How many of you like delicious fruit roll-ups or dried fruit to munch on? I imagine most everybody does, and those are really, really expensive to buy in the store, but very, very easy to make at home. So we're going to just kind of go over the basics of um, dehydrating and um, show you some kind of the tools that help make that job a lot easier and some alternatives if you don't have these, um, this equipment at home. Um, for fruit leather, again, no matter what recipe you're doing, refer to your book. On that section, this is the dehydration, dehydrating section. And to get the, all the tips and tricks and the official recipes. So, the first thing for fruit leather is um, you can do this in your oven. A lot of the newer ovens, however, do not go down low enough in temperature. So you really have to watch that. But they can be done on a cookie sheet, um, on saran wrap, and you just watch them really carefully. Or you can um, purchase one of these dehydrators and do it that way. So for fruit leather, probably everyone has a blender at home. You put your fruit in there according to the recipe. Um, some of them have added lemon juice. You can add spices. You can kind of make those up as you go along because dehydrating, it is not near as important that you follow every recipe exactly. You can kind of do some mixing and matching of fruits and, and get the taste that you want. So, these are about, if you're going to do it in a dehydrator, this is a fruit leather sheet and these are um, plastic and you just blend your fruit up with honey or sugar or whatever you want to put in that, pour it on the sheet and then we put it in one of, our, one of the dehydrators. This is a round dehydrator and um, it is a lot less expensive and it has, this one has two, four trays, and you can get them up to eight trays, a lot bigger. Um, the trays are perforated like this, so you, so the air flows throughout the dehydrator. You then would put your sheet of fruit leather on here, and you would fill up all the trays and dry this way. You put this on, you, um, this is the motor and where the air comes out and circulates. And then it has brackets that hooks it all together to help keep the airflow inside and make sure it doesn't come apart. The trouble with this is it is extremely noisy. So if you put something on to dry at night, you want to put it the furthest away from where you're going to sleep because it will keep you awake all night. The other thing that's really hard is um, the air does not circulate evenly in here. So you'll get done spots, not so done spots, and it may say it takes eight hours to do fruit leather. Well, the top tray may be done in four hours, so if you put it on at eight o'clock at night, you have to get up at midnight and maybe rotate your trays. So this one has some disadvantages. It is much cheaper and, and it will do the job. You just have to be more vigilant. The one thing with all of this specialty equipment, you need to keep your um, instruction manual and refer to it as you use that piece of equipment. The dehydrator that I like is this one, and it has two, four, six, eight, nine shelves in it. You pull them out and it has um, a plastic mesh on here, but you couldn't do fruit leather on here. So you would do your fruit leather trays, put them in here, and put them back 
in the box. The, the beauty of this one is it is has a dial where you set the temperature and it actually says here what you're doing. Like fruit leather, you would set, set it at 135 degrees, which is down here. And then you would read in your book how long, and it has a timer. And once that timer goes off, the heat goes off. So you could set this at night when you went to bed, and it would be drying all night. And when you got up in the morning, it would have turned itself off, and whatever you were drying would be in there and done. It is also extremely quiet, so you could have this sitting on your kitchen counter and carry on with your daily activities. So they come either with the thermometer or the temperature adjustment and the timer, or they come without them. But if you're going to invest, you may want to invest a little more money and um, get one with the bells and whistles. Again, they come with excellent instruction manuals and you just need to refer to those often. There are some other tools that help make dehydrating much easier. And I don't know if any of you have ever used a mandolin, but as you can see, it has an extremely sharp cutting blade you put your fruit on, on the bottom here, and it sticks with these little nails down in the fruit. So your hands would never get near to it, and then you run it back and forth. What this does is it cuts every single slice very evenly so that they all dry uniformly, and you don't have some that are just dried to a crisp, some that are still too moist. The other thing that helps with this is this is a cut proof glove. And so if you're still leery, you can put that glove on it. This is Kevlar, it will never cut through here and you go ahead and slice your fruit or vegetables, whatever. Um, it also comes with two extra blades so you can alter how thick you, you want your fruits and vegetables to be. Um, the one thing that every year usually comes out is what is the hottest thing in food preservation? So many of you have maybe been reading online um, or on Pinterest or Facebook about dry canning and um, that is not a process that is recommended. Dry canning is where you take your dried food you put it into a canning jar, and then you heat it in the oven. And what that does is creates extra moisture, and you have that tight-fitting lid on it, and usually that causes your food to then spoil or mold. So if you do read about dry canning, please avoid that process, and because that has just come out this spring. It's the newest food preservation method. The one thing that is new in the dehydrating world is uh, a humidity control jar. And this is a new jar put out by Ball and Kerr. It has a little basket that fits in the top of your canning jar that has a like a sponge that absorbs all the humidity so that you can safely store like dried herbs, dried fruit, whatever, in a jar and that is a tight fitting lid. And then as that pillow gets full of um, moisture, you can remove that pillow, put a new one in, and it keeps your um, dried fruits and vegetables and herbs fresh and not spoiling. So, you might want to check those out when you go to get your supplies if you're going to do dehydrating and a lot of it. Fruit leather is really simple to store. You just take it off your sheet and it will, you usually spray this sheet with a little um, like cooking spray so it comes up easily. And then you can cut it in serving sizes, roll those up in um, saran wrap and 
keep them in a cool, dark, dry place, airtight, and um, serve them. They usually won't last long. You won't have to store them long if you have kids or yourself that love them. So storing usually isn't an issue with, um, with fruit leather. So there are a lot of things you can dry. I love to do clementines in the winter. Um, we cut them on our mandolin, dry them, and then dip them in chocolate. It's just like a pure heaven. They are so wonderful. Dried pineapple's good, dried onions. You can dry just about anything that you would grow in your garden. So, good luck and happy drying.